Welcome to the OCI Grails QuickCast, bite-sized portions of Grails productivity tips to help maximize developer productivity with the framework. Grails QuickCasts are brought to you by OCI, the home of the core Grails development team and your source for professional support, project work, and training around the Grails framework. Grails QuickCasts are distributed in partnership with DZone, who help build knowledge and relationships to maximize your success. My name is James Klee, and this is a Grails QuickCast on using the Angular scaffolding in the Grails 3.1.x application. For the purposes of this demo, I'm using Grails 3.1.8. The first step is to create the application you wish to use the scaffolding in. We will create a blog. Then we will import that project into IntelliJ. The first step in getting everything to work correctly is to add a dependency to the scaffolding plugin itself. We also need to add it to the build script dependencies so we have access to the Grail tasks. There are also a few other plugins that we need in order for the generated assets to work correctly. These three dependencies are asset pipeline plugins. The first is the template asset pipeline, which will uh, allow our templates to be accessible client side. The second is the annotate asset pipeline, which will annotate our Angular code for us. And the third one is the closure wrap asset pipeline, which will wrap each of our files in an immediately invoked function expression. Now we can go ahead and create our domain class. We're going to create a post domain will represent a blog post. And we're going to give it a title, a body, and a date published. Now the easiest way to expose a rest endpoint for this domain class is to annotate this domain with that resource. And we will specify a URI of slash post and we're also going to specify formats of JSON. In Grails 3.2, this will no longer be necessary because JSON is the default format. In addition, because our domain class contains a date, there is some configuration with the data binding for dates. The default format that Angular uses is not uh, supported by default, so we can fix that with uh, some quick configuration to add that format to our config. Great. Now the next step is to actually generate our code. To do that, we run the ng generate all command and pass in the fully qualified domain class name. Okay, let's take a look and see what was created. It created this my blog folder with two subfolders that represent Angular modules. The first is the core module, which will contain common assets that are needed by all scaffolded domains. And the second is the Angular module for the post domain class. You'll see here it has some configuration for UI router for the list, create, edit, and show states. In addition, defines a dependency on the core module, ng resource, and UI router. These are the required statements for the third party libraries that this module requires the first being Angular itself, the second being UI router, and the third being Angular resource. These are the default locations where it expects them to be, however, you can change that with configuration. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to leave those as, as is and add some configuration and a plugin to get those assets into our application. The easiest way of doing so is using the client dependencies plugin 
by Craig Burke. So we'll go ahead into our build.gradle, add the plugin to our build script dependencies, and add the apply plugin there. Now all that's left is to configure that plugin to download the third-party assets that we require. So we have dependencies for Angular, Angular Resource, and Angular UI Router. So now that everything is configured, we have some additional steps that are needed to uh, fix the default application.js file. By default, it has this required tree dot, which will bring in uh, all of these assets, but it will bring them in, in the wrong order. So what we need to do is change this to require our post module. Okay, so now our post module will be on our page. Now all that's left is to configure our index GSP so that everything will work together. The first thing we'll do is define which uh, Angular module we'd like to control, and that is ng app myblog.post. Next, we need to give a place for the router to put the templates. We do that with the UI view directive. And then third, we need to change these controller links to link to the UI router states instead of doing a full page refresh. And that should be all that's required. So now we're ready to run our application and give it a try. Let's wait for this to load all the way. And we'll click on post controller. And instead of doing a full page reload, we'll see we have the post list. We will click on new post, pick a date. This is with the default Chrome date picker. Give it a title and a body and hit create, which takes us to the show page. We can edit that post, pick a different date update. We can go to our post list and see the post is here and click on the ID to show it again. We can also delete the post. Yes, for sure. And that's that. So this has been a quick demo with a very simple domain. Uh, the supported uh, data types and associations should be very similar to the fields plugin. Um, if you have any issues or questions, feel free to visit our Slack or post an issue on GitHub. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of the OCI Grails QuickCasts. For more information on how OCI can help you with Grails or any of these other practice areas, visit OCIweb.com or contact us at info at OCIweb.com. Follow our Twitter accounts at Object Computing and at Grails Framework. Also, read regular updates on the OCI Grails team blog at grailsblog.ociweb.com. Mm -hmm.